Base is dropped on another edition of Soccer Down Here. It's a wall pass Wednesday, so that means that pretty much anything is on the table. And uh, we'll get into it here in uh, just a little bit. And when it comes to things to talk about, we do have some things to discuss. We do have the decision that came down from the disciplinary committee yesterday on Marcelina Moreno. So we'll get into that. And the, the and I wanted to take that philosophically and kind of work our way, not necessarily just once again yelling into the ether about it, but you know, try to be constructive about uh, what we can do going forward with, uh, you know, how do we make things better instead of sitting there and, uh, you know, seemingly banging our head against a wall when it comes to what's going on with pro and disco. Uh, we've got that. We've got some stuff in Charlotte going on, a couple different things. And uh, obviously, uh, looking at uh, Willie P. Styles' uh, preparations for uh, a, a friendly between Chelsea and uh, Charlotte. It's, uh, that's got to be a fun thing for, for Willie P and Jess to be able to sit there and, and figure out a, a board and how you're going to try to call that match. That one's going to be a fun one for both of them. And then we'll get into other things that are dancing around our heads, departures in Charlotte, grass in Charlotte, signings uh, for both colleges and for the twos. We'll, we'll get into that stuff. And uh, uh, we do have the financials for uh, tours, and we'll get into that considering the uh, the end result of one of the matches last night in South Florida with uh, Inter Miami and Barca, and obviously then we'll have uh, other stuff to fill out your time. Dylan Butler, as a reminder, programming reminder, uh, he will join us later on the show or on the network, and you know, we'll discuss pretty much a lot of the same things that are going on the week that was, the week that will be, those kinds of things. So. Uh, Jared Smith, you had a late night last night. What what did you go see again? What was the uh, the concert of choice? Uh, that was Alkaline Trio and Coheed and Cambria at the Rock Seats. First show I've been to since the since the pandemic, so that was fun. But um, yeah, it was like it, despite that, like getting dinner ready and going through like that was fun. Getting like cooking salmon and then looking at the phone to see like oh Marcelina Moreno got fined. That's that's fun. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Uh, look, man, like if pro's going to do that, then that weekly sheet needs to be chocked full Uh huh. because it just feels like they're picking and choosing and they're just so maddeningly inconsistent about it all. Yeah. And before we get into that, it is time for the uh, morning kickoff. The opening kickoff brought to us by our friends at Kickoff Coffee, kickoffcoffeeco.com. And you can follow them on uh, the social medias, on the bird at the face space and the gram kickoff coffee co on those. Once again, thanks to everyone who has uh, invested in kickoff coffee. And reminder: when you invest in kickoff coffee, use the code Soccer Down Here fifteen, and what you get is fifteen percent off your your purchase price. But reminder. 10% of the of the uh, the proceeds head toward youth development. So very, very cool stuff there. Soccer down here, 15, and you get to invest in the youth development aspect of the game. You get to invest in the game that we all love to talk about here on a daily basis in various functions and forms. And so, uh, Jared, I'm going to, I want you to keep your microphone open because, you know, this, this, I'm going to, I've got it this morning and it's just something that literally has confounded me in, in the last well, I was going to say the last 45 minutes to an hour or so, but it is something that has consistently confounded me, and I'm going to petition for an answer if anyone has it. If anyone has an answer and can explain this to me, I would love to hear what it is. So, Jared, here's my situation. I will swear, I will openly swear by the philosophy of having a weighted blanket on my bed. It was something that, you know, last Christmas I thought it would be a good thing to get for the boss because, you know, she's a bit of a restless sleeper sometimes. And so uh, in wanting her to, to get as full a night's sleep as humanly possible, I invested in a weighted blanket. And it has turned out to benefit the both of us, actually, when it comes to, to having it on, on, on the bed at night. And I find that I get to, to sleep 
a little more than I have in the past. And so I, this to me, you know, it's a good purchase. But here's the layout of the bed that, that we have. It is, you know, pretty standard. It's sheet, blanket, weighted blanket. And every single morning, I literally have to take, and it's a wall past Wednesday, and that's why I'm addressing this topic today and not any other day of the week. I literally have to take an additional 10 minutes out of my day to remake the bed every single time. And let me explain. The sheet ends up going completely in one direction. The blanket on top of the sheet goes the absolute opposite direction. But in every single day, the weighted blanket stays where it is. Everything underneath it moves completely one direction or the other. And I have to remake the bed every single day. Not that you, you know, that you shouldn't make your bed every single day. But the mere fact that the weighted blanket, which is on top, it is the top layer on the bed, stays absolutely static still while the sheet and the blanket are going opposite directions and the weighted blanket is staying the same. It has confounded me completely and totally confounded me and I don't quite have an answer for it. So if anyone can understand or knows the physics of beds and blankets, please let me know because it's driving me crazy and I have to do the same routine every single morning. Get ready for the show, get up, get out of bed, make the bed, fix the sheets, fix the blanket. Weighted blankets just kind of sitting there staring at me going, nah, nah, you don't need to, you don't need to work anything with me. This is what I'm facing every single day. I don't know if I'm alone in this, Jarrett. I don't know if uh, I am part of a fraternity or sorority that, you know, that I didn't know about until today, but it was just something I had literally on my chest and thought that I would address it because I don't have an answer for it. No, no, I don't, I don't have one myself. Um, generally like generally mine is a life of chaos because every morning I'm greeted by a five-year-old coming running into the room and basically doing a basically getting swatted by a five-year-old um you know coming in and, and doing a you know a no-knock warrant on my room <laughs> so it, it's a different animal for me but i don't um i don't uh i don't handle issues with the uh with the concept of of, of a giant weight blanket or or all that jazz and like yeah so i can't help you but I would invite anyone who understands the physics to do so. Yeah. And so that was, like I said, that to me was, it was just a question that has stuck in my head and I don't have an answer. And I was wondering if anybody else had the answer involving the physics of betting and, and why a weighted blanket decides to sit there and laugh at me every single morning after getting a night's nice use. But anyway, uh, reach out to me on Twitter uh at soccer down here at osg nelson and just let me know if you guys have any thoughts as to why i'm confounded as much as i am so uh there you go that, that's your that, well that, confounded confounded for that is different from being confounded by sports because be it soccer or you know the south swing through you know south central georgia for <laughs> high school football we're all confounded by different things that is absolutely true or the people from like when you do corky kell where you get like tombs county rolling up here and a bunch of people who don't know that tombs county exists much less where it is and the hellfire they can rain upon your life and those around you yes and because it is a plentiful chaos that they are capable of yeah especially when they go up against vidalia in a uh, in a rivalry in a rivalry game out there Ooh. region uh two double a i believe so yeah i, I I just love when they show up and you get like schools from the north side of Atlanta, like ah, the South Central Georgia. I'm like, oh, <laughs> excuse me, sir. <laughs> You're not. You don't understand. No, you, no, it's uh, we're getting there too. Mm. It ain't about this life. No, that's okay. Yeah, no, it's not your fault that you're not about this life, but you ain't about it. No, and uh, here's your learning experience, by the way, and we'll we'll get back to you in a couple of hours. A uh, couple of things on the table this morning. 
And you addressed it before we got into uh, the, the morning kickoff, opening kickoff. Brought to us by our friends at Kickoff Coffee, kickoffcoffee.com, and uh, Kickoff Coffee CO on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Soccer Down Here 15 is your code to get 15% off. And the boss really does like the deep roasted Italian uh, blend that is part of Kickoff Coffee. And uh, don't forget, 10% goes to youth development. And that is, that's your morning kickoff for the day. But yeah, as you were, as you were discussing, once again, Pro, or sorry, the Disco has decided. Yeah, let's say make sure it's, it's yeah. Disco in this case. Yeah, the, the Disco has decided that Marcelina Moreno got an undisclosed fine for his actions in, in uh, the match against Orlando late in the first half. And here's how it was called here, courtesy of our friends of ABC and Major League Soccer. So that was the play. And, you know, uh, I'll pull back the curtain a little bit. I thought it was a penalty. And I am I have, as we get ready for the, the halftime highlights and uh, Five Stripes Live at Mercedes-Benz, I have, a, I have a big monitor that's in front of me. And I'm literally looking at it from about nine different angles, and I'm going, how is that not a penalty? And we'll get into the context of an earlier call in just a little bit. But how it wasn't a penalty in first and foremost, and then Disco decides, okay, it's an undisclosed fine for you. And so I was once again confounded by Disco and what they thought uh, is worthy of a fine and what the uh, ref on site and the, the referee crew on site plus VAR thought was not worthy of a particular call the other way. And I thought that you had a, uh, yesterday and today, I thought that you had a, an interesting perspective on it. Yeah, so I mean, this was an interesting one in the sense that, like, you you get you get the call of uh, it's it's no foul given, and then they go back and check for VAR. I thought, I thought they handled it the correct way. Um, was losing my mind like everyone else when Aiden McFadden tried to throw that ball in, mm-hmm. pretty much instantly. I'm like, don't do it. Hold the ball for a half second before you throw it in, so that they have a chance to look at it, and Eventually, you know, they he, eventually, you know, they uh, Rivas pulls it back, basically cancels the throw in, so that he can take a look. Thought they handled it really well on that front, and you know, then they look at it, they don't give the penalty, and, and I'll tell you, for me, I'm fine with not giving the penalty there because I thought the contact wasn't as wasn't malicious in the box, like it wasn't as bad in the box. Um, if anything, give a free kick there because yeah, he's getting physically pulled back at the edge of the box, but it's outside the box. Um, but I, and I was looking, and I admit I was looking at continuation to use the basketball term where the, yeah, con- that's fine. The contact is continuing and the action is continuing inside the box. And then Marcelina Moreno hits the turf because, you know, once again, similar to a, a play in Fort Lauderdale where, you know, Brooks Lennon. Uh, pretty much got the same uh, reception from the disciplinary committee for his actions. And the uh, the center ref at the time thought that uh, Brooks Lennon was diving, basically. I, I, that was how I was viewing it as well. You're still seeing swimming going on and you're still seeing contact going on. And Marcelina Moreno finally hits the deck because of momentum and contact. That's why I thought it was a penalty. But I understand your point of view. Yeah, and, and and for me, I think, yeah, Marcy does go down easy. I think he does for sure. He's, But I think he's going down easy there because it's a sequence where he's getting fouled for a couple seconds consistently with no whistle. And at that point, he's trying to make a point mm-hmm. because he just keeps on getting, just keeps on getting pulled back. And then he finally does go down. And it's one of those where I'm kind of like, Live and let live with it because it should have been a free kick. Rivas doesn't give it. Moreno does a great job getting around the defender, gets inside of him. He's getting pulled back. It should have been an insanely dangerous free kick from right on the edge of the box, right against the touchline, like a really tricky free kick to potentially deal with. And instead, what you get is instead you get this situation where it should have been a free kick. They don't give it. Okay whatever you can't that's fine because you can't go back and referee the game and i wouldn't want i don't want far to be that anyway i don't want far to go back and re-referee the game and, and give a free kick in that moment i'm fine with not giving the penalty because i thought the there was a little 
continuation, but it wasn't it, it, to me it wasn't enough to to warrant a penalty on review. Um, that being said, mm-hmm. it just feels it uh, frankly kind of feels antagonistic to 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 pop them with a fine in a situation where you screwed up the call in the first place. Yeah. And then you just decide, okay, we didn't get the free kick call. That's fine. Um, yeah. He goes down easy in the box. He's trying to make a point because he'd been getting fouled for, you know, five, 10 feet. Now you're going to throw the fine at him. Basically on top of the fact that your ref missed the call. Mm-hmm. This is fine. I see no way that this is going to make people mad or <laughs> cause problems. Because again, if you wanted to, um, if they wanted to, they could drop a fine like this on pretty much, ah, uh, God, one or two people a game mm-hmm. for going down easy for you know for embellishing contact. It's it's one of those things. This has been my beef with every time this comes out, and it's not just Atlanta because they've they've done this with a number of teams, and they've done this for a while with the, with the punishments. Just show some consistency. Yeah. If you're really gonna start finding people for embellishment like that, then start finding all of them, with just picking and choosing which ones you want to find. Just over that, like yeah. I'm just it's it's exhausting. And yeah, and you know what? Uh, you got some fans because I know my mentions are full of it. You got some Atlanta fans who were who got a complex about it now. Yeah, because Marcelino Moreno is third in the league in fouls draw in uh, fouls. I think second or third in the league. Uh, I know he's third in the league in completed dribbles. Reynoso is like far and away the most most uh, volume dribbler in the league. I think he's like got over a hundred successful dribbles this year. It's something stupid. Um, but uh, Marcelino Moreno gets fouled a lot in this league, and you're going to start dropping fines on him and other guys like him. Just feels like you are, it feels like you were picking one hell of, one hell of a fight to have. And yeah, Atlanta fans are going to have complexes, and I'm sure that this will just create a vicious cycle where you know Mothership Digital Media continues to kind of. Uh, poke the bear with Atlanta fans a bit. And it's just, it's, it's a, it's a wholly unnecessary vicious cycle that seems to continue. All right. So it's, and this is just off the top of my head and I, and I, you know, and I'm trying to find the, the empirical evidence and see if it exists as to how many different players and how many different times Atlanta United has had these retroactive disco judgments for things like this, uh, Marcy, Brooks Lennon, this season, uh, Barco on multiple occasions. I want to say PT uh, was was also a part of this, and that's just off the top of my head, going back a couple of seasons. So the, you know, and I can understand definitely why you know Atlanta United fans would sit there and go, "Okay, this is selective enforcement." When, if you really wanted to get into it, to your point, we could go back to earlier in the first half of this match where you have an Orlando player already going down. You get the foul call, which results in the free kick, which results in the goal. And we've talked about Rivas and the issues associated with that, uh, you know, all all week long. But the the idea about you you should be able to call or you could call this a couple different times a match every single time out. That pre-existing example that led to a set piece, which led to a goal, should be first and foremost in everybody's mind, where you're sitting there and you're going, you know, hey, let's, you know, let's look at this and see what, you know, what, what the deal is here. I mean, I don't think I'm talking out of school. Yeah, it's... No, nah, I mean, it's... It, like I said, it, it's just... It's un- all of it feels unnecessary. Like the, it, it feels like, it feels like it's almost antagonistic sometimes because like, yeah, you could pick different, you could pick better situations to, to figure out how you want to go about 
these punishments, you know, like it's just you, you gotta. You, I mean, if it you pick pick something, if you're gonna do these these fines, like you can pick more than three a week. Yeah. Or I think it was just one a two a week. One a week. It was only one that was on that list this week because one of them. I was thinking there were three. There were three incidents that required fines. One was Tati for hands to the neck and face. Yeah. Which it's a day that ends in Y. Of course, Tati did that. <laughs> Why wouldn't he? I mean, he's just kind of who he is at this point, and uh, it looks like that was going to be his last game for New York City, but the fact that it's occurred more than once, and I love Tati, don't get me wrong, the fact that y'all had to go back and do it more than once, why the hell are your refs not watching him closer? Because mm-hmm. if it warrants that kind of fine, like, hey, maybe maybe watch a little closer, guys, um, if it's a repeat offender kind of thing on that front. Yes. Because um, you've got that, then you've got the... You also had to like not leaving the field in a timely manner. Fine, yeah. those are always fun. I uh, was it uh, Kamar Miller for uh, so. for Montreal, I believe. So yeah, the disciplinary committee. Castianos is fined, hands to the head, face, neck of an opponent, fined an undisclosed amount. Marcelino and Kamal Miller guilty of failure to leave the field in a timely manner with ten minutes to go with Montreal leading Toronto. So and Miller was fined a disclo- an undisclosed amount. So yeah, it was those three this week in fines from Disco. Yeah, and so it's 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 just frustrating because you get another you get another fine. And like I said, I mean, um I mean, did I miss if you get to the point if you get you getting to the point now where people are getting a complex about it mm-hmm. because you keep popping guys for these fines and it's it's not a uniform process. And it's so it's almost like a pick and choose thing where, you know, of course, they feel like. Of course, they kind of feel like they're getting singled out because that seems to be that seems to be the way it looks that they're getting that, you know, you've got Atlanta players getting singled out. So of course you start to get fans with a complex about this. It doesn't take a lot to give a fan a complex or a fan base, a complex, I should say, when you get them into large numbers like that, you doesn't take a lot to get them in that mindset. And now it feels like you're kind of there because this was the only one y'all published. I'm sure there was other embellishment around the league last week, but y'all picked that one and you picked it that, the only reason you're in that situation is because your ref blew the call in the first place leading up to it. And he's just trying to make a point. Yeah. And if you want to argue, he should have stayed on his feet and he shouldn't have thrown his feet out from under himself. Okay. That's fine. I'm, I'm here to listen to it. That's fine. Um, but you're only here because the ref didn't do his job efficiently before that, mm-hmm. which has been an issue, not just with this, but around the league in times where when we see things boil over because a ref is not doing their job is not communicating efficiently. Is not calling a consistent game. Is not setting the line. It, it, yeah, man, there's just a lot to unfold about it. Yeah, and that I'm was to stop. Oh no, but that was why I wanted to kind of ask. You know, how do we address this cause and effect here between pro decisions and Disco coming in behind and be and showing iniquity? When it comes to doling out retroactive punishment, and you you were you were getting into the the second follow up question here from the Department of Redundancy Department, how do we, uh, you know, better this situation involving pro their activity on the field and giving Disco less to do, or if Disco has things to do, make sure that. It is, you know, it is legitimately stuff that is, you know, so egregious instead of sitting here and nitpicking and going, yeah, well, we could have done that. We could have done that, but we're going to do this. How do we make this situation better to where we're not having these kinds of events every single week where a fan base, regardless of where they are, doesn't have to feel like they're being singled out? Because I can guarantee you. NYCFC, and this is, you know, just from this week, NYCFC fans, I can guarantee you, will sit there and look at, you know, Tati Castellanos in Hudson River and try to, you know, and wonder why he was when there could have been incidents that were close to it. So, you know, it's, I don't want to necessarily single out what we're seeing from Atlanta United, but I wanted to give the the Moreno incident context 
considering what we saw earlier in the match that wasn't called, but you call the Atlanta United incident. And then you have Tati Castellanos, who, you know, I'm sure he wasn't the only one in that instance. But once again, you look at, you know, hands to the face of, uh, you know, hands to the neck and face of Tom Barlow. And, you know, you're wondering, how do we address this to make it more even handed across the board? And, and I'm looking at the Castellanos uh, element. I'm, I'm looking at the Castellanos incident as it was brought up by Major League Soccer. And it is, it's ridiculous. You literally have Tati Castellanos, and Jared, I I will be here sitting in the church of Tati for this one. Literally, Tati Castellanos takes his right hand to Tom Barlow and and gives that open-handed little pop to the chin. You know, it's like, yeah, 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 I understand what you're saying or whatever, and you just kind of pop the guy twice. He pops him on 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 the cheek twice. That's the fine. That literally is the fine for Tati Castellanos for sitting there and just kind of sitting there going, yeah, I get it. And you go pop one, two. That's the fine. Seriously, that's what the fine was. How about some perspective here when it comes to administering punishment and understanding the heat of the room? I think that and and if you're going to do stuff like that, then you've got to card him and you've got to do other things to, to bring the temperature down. But to do something, and, and to me, I, I know that, it, to me, it seems ticky-tack, where you sit there and it's like, you know, it's like the old, the, uh, like we used to see in uh, your, your stereotypic uh, Italian mafia family movies, where you sit there and it's like you're trying to sit there and you make a point and you sit there and you hit the conciliare on the cheek twice. You know, it's like bang, bang, and then you're done. It, it, I, looked at, I just looked at the video again, and I'm like, that's what got him the fine? It, it, it just... You know, at at times it stuns me what we see sometimes when it comes to to uh, disco working its way backwards. Yeah, it's it just seems it just a lot of it just seems unnecessary with the way it's all handled. So we'll see what they do next time. Um, I'm sure this isn't the last time we'll have this conversation about about everything going on with 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 disco. And yeah, I don't know, man. Um. The only good news you're looking for good news in all of this? Sure. Um Yeah, if you're looking for good news, there's no suspension that comes with it, so Moreno's available. Now whether or not you start him in the next game or how however you want to run things out there, um at least he wasn't suspended. So that's yeah. good news. So yeah. we can run with that. So we can get something to be happy about. Um <laughs> you can be disappointed with that one, and I know I am. I was disappointed with the decision, but that is what it is. Now all you can do is uh, is is move forward and get ready because now you have a very difficult game where you have to go out to the West Coast, play late at night against an L.A. team that is kind of melting down around themselves. It's mm-hmm. fun. The Galaxy have tried so hard for the last few years to still be the Galaxy that we've known and loved for so long, and it's not really working Winners of two of their last 10, two, six, and two. And we'll get into that on Friday on the weekend whip around patent pending trademark coming, hopefully. All right. Uh, let's go to Charlotte and, and a couple of different things. Oh, let's go to Charlotte. Let's go to Charlotte. But uh, first and foremost, let's talk about the stuff that is off the field. And as of yesterday, another Tepper Sports and Entertainment executive, more than two months after their CEO has stepped down, somebody else is out the door. Uh, WCNC, NBC, uh, 636 confirmed that Mark Hart resigned as the company's chief operating officer effective Monday. Reason for his departure wasn't immediately known. CNC asked for more information. They haven't gotten it yet. Hart's departure marks the latest exit from David Tepper's company back in May. You'll remember Nick Kelly left his post as CEO just three months after assuming the role. The company said that Kelly stepped away after helping launch Charlotte FC and serving as team president. Those executive level exits are not the only ones, but they come amidst the uh, the fallout, remember, of the canceled Panthers practice facility project. Say that 10 times fast. Panthers practice project in Rock Hill, just over the over the border in South Carolina. Back in March, uh, David Tepper paused construction work at the site. The fallout includes a government lawsuit involving the county against Tepper's companies in the city of Rock Hill. One of Tepper's companies has fired back with a complaint in Delaware bankruptcy court. 
calling for a declaratory judgment and relief. A judge has greenlit a $20 million loan from one of Tepper's companies to another to finance the failed project's debts. So we'll keep a, you know, and that's the first element in all of this. And so you have uh, Tom Glick, you have Nick Kelly, and now you have the third one in Mark Hart, in short order, resigning from Tepper Sports and Entertainment. Yet another piece of the hierarchy in the front office is now out the door in Charlotte. Yeah, this is, it's just been so numerous Uh at this point that it's, it's wild just how much Charlotte has lost across the board, even in just the last calendar year. I mean, it's just, it feels like it is one after the other, pop, 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 just a constant, a barrage of people and it's man it's kind of jarring at this point i don't know what else um i don't know what else you could call it other than it's just jarring how how frequently it's happening um i i like I, said, I don't really have anything else to contribute to that because it's just i mean it's just it's i i mean it, and credit to the team by the way because like that's a t- they had a really tough they had a really tough loss against miami but before that, they did a number on Nashville. They've responded really well overall after uh, MAR's uh, departure. Mm-hmm. Better than I thought they would. And they've the way they've added pieces has been really impressive. Like Charlotte's, Charlotte's fun. Charlotte's going to be an interesting watch at the end of the year here because they're about to run up on the issue that a lot of expansion teams run up on. And that's a lack of depth. Mm-hmm. It's like... They don't there. You could start to see it in that game against Miami. Those legs got heavy at the end. It almost felt like they were trying to conserve energy for that push at the end. And they just, they weren't able to do it, but those legs are getting heavy and you don't have the depth yet to be able to weather that. And that's okay. 99.99% of expansion teams don't have that depth yet. Yeah. And you're not expected to. And that's going to possibly hit you later in the season. And you're going to have some games where you win and you're feeling great. And you're going to have some games like that where you just run out of gas and you're going to have to hang on to the draw. It's just something you got to learn how to do. And, you know, we talked about Atlanta learning, learning how to see the game out. And Atlanta's not an expansion team anymore, but it's a mentality thing. And I do want to see if charlotte's got that in their back pocket as the season goes on where they can grind out those kinds of games to get a point here or there or to hang on to three points and avoid dropping points like they did in miami it can be a learning experience for them but credit to them for on the field but yeah off the field the whole tepper thing is just chaotic as hell man yeah (laughs) chaotic is a word for it definitely that is without a doubt how it looks like in charlotte And, and speaking of you know we talked about how you have there are times where you get to to do cool things, and Willie Peace, Willie Peace style, Will Palachuk and uh, Jessica Charman get to call tonight, be friendly with Chelsea and Charlotte FC. Interesting thing about this, and, and Jarrett, you found the numbers, so I give you full credit uh, for this. Uh, it is not going to be the standard surface that Atlanta United fans see or that Major League Soccer fans see at Bank of America Stadium tonight. It is not going to be that turf. It's going to be grass that is going to be rolled in for this match, rolled up, put away, and put someplace else. I don't know where the, the grass will be bestowed afterward, but it is it is basically a grass surface drive through for Chelsea tonight at Bank of America going up against Charlotte where grass shows up, grass goes away. And this is it's another instance where a Premier League side gets to uh, to kind of sit there and say, hey, well, we'll come, but you got to do this. Charlotte did that and it won't stay. Yeah, and there's it's six, uh, reportedly six figures to roll in the turf for a couple hours. It just seems excessive, let's call it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, more power to them because I hope this I hope this does go well for them because it, it's it's a fun opportunity for a young team to to get in and 
and bring in, you know, a big club to come play with them. So that, that part is awesome. But yeah, I have, um, I have questions from like, uh, <laughs> Yola. I'm just going to roll out here and do that. eh? Uh-huh. Okay. All right. And like, the way field turf, I would, I would, I would be interested to see the way field turf is advancing. I want to see. I would love to see a comparison, and I don't know where you would go for this, or who, you know, what sport and scientists you would discuss this with. I would love to see a comparison of it, you know, from then to you know, from five years ago even to now to see the the impacts of field turf because I'm I'm sure it's I'm sure it's different. It has to be. Yeah. But how much so is it? You know, like. Um, you know, what's, what is, you know, how, how, how much is the mitigating effect? Cause those premier league teams only want to play on grass and I get that, but you know, how, what is the, what's the effect from now versus five years ago of the field turf mm-hmm. as it has changed and evolved? Yeah. And you know, you, you wonder how different it would be. And, and I get the idea of, of of a Chelsea coming over and playing here in the United States because their season starts August 5th. And I know at the same time that the Premier League teams don't want to go anywhere on tour unless they can make sure that they're going to be 130% healthy by the time they go back. They understand the value of doing these tours, but they don't want to jeopardize anything as they head back. And, and, you know, you with all of the, the money that you've invested in transfers and all these other kinds of things, you don't want that those fresh investments to sit there and go, yeah, uh, you know, you know, Kulabali has you know hurt a knee or something like that. You don't want that kind of stuff. No, on a on a preseason tour heading back to to get you ready for the Premier League. So no, I, I completely understand it. But to your point, I, I I'd like to see you know, and I know that there are times when we. You know, we we hear about rock stars and their demands when they have to have a concert. You know, they've got to have certain show writers. Yeah, the, the, all these show writers. I want to know what the show writers are for Chelsea, for Real Madrid, for Barca to do these tours. I want to know what those show writers are. That that to me is what that that's what I'm hunting for. That's what. Yeah, I, show, give, give me the most absurd, over the top show writers <laughs> humanly possible, please. Um. Yeah, give give me Premier League show writers. That's that's what I want to see. I want to see how they differentiate. I want to see how many of it's like, hey, we got a show writer from like I don't know, um, I don't know, Bournemouth versus Manchester City. <laughs> what do they look like? How bad is the difference? Yes, and, and uh, at least I can address things financially when it comes to a couple of tours, uh, Barca. For their four matches here in the United States, and we'll get into one of them here in just a bit. Barca gets ten million for four matches. Real Madrid gets ten million for three matches with their preseason tours. And last night, Barca put six on the board in South Florida against Inter Miami. I think Memphis got on the board and tried to remind folks, you know, hey, I'm still I'm still here. But, uh, you know, if is yeah. it bad when you say Memphis, I thought, like, what the hell was 901 Memphis? In this game? <laughs> yeah, Ben Pierre. Like, is, Philip, is Philip Goodrum scoring? Like, what? Why? Well, Why man. is Philip Goodrum scoring in my? Oh, oh, that Memphis. Yes. The one who fell off the face of the earth, man, yeah. who was really good. Memphis the pie. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No, Memphis but, is Memphis was really good, man. Yeah, and yeah, so Philip Goodrum uh, scored, no, uh, Memphis Depay scored one of the six for Barca in their 6-0 win, where both the uh, Romeo Beckham and Harvey Neville got minutes last night for for Inter-Miami, I guess, when it was completely and totally out of reach. So uh, dads got to see their... Yeah, people had problems with that. (laughs) It's it's like, Phil Neville's like, this is a huge game for us, and you put in his son and Beckham's son, like... Wasn't that big for you at that point, was it, buddy? Of nope. course, by that point, it's 6 nothing, And uh, some of those Barcelona goals were a little too easy. Uh-huh. So, yeah, one of the, the biggest one of the biggest matches in Inter-Miami history. And the visitors put six on the board for you. 
And, uh, you know, so then I say, yeah, OK, we'll go ahead and put our sons in so they can go up against against Barca. But have, by the way, have you seen uh, all of the the Robert Lewandowski teasing that has been going on 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 social media? And what I mean by that is uh, not people poking fun at Robert Lewandowski for his change of address, but Barcelona teasing the un- the grand unveiling of Robert Lewandowski. And apparently this is going to be happening later today as we're talking. But they're making him, and because he's in Miami, he's he's in Miami as a as a you know part of the the rollout here. But they're making him look like Mitch Buchanan from Baywatch, and he's standing in his Barca warm up suit at these lifeguard, uh, it's it's the life the lifeguard houses that the each individual lifeguard houses that they have you know every X number of yards down the down the beach. Literally, it's like they're they're teasing him, and he's in the he's in the the Barca warm up suit on the the lifeguard house at, at some random pier in, in Miami Beach. They're trotting him out that way so far, leading up to his grand introduction, which is supposed to be uh, later today. And there's a thought that he might be uh, in uh, Vegas, trotted out for a cameo against Real Madrid. But yeah, Robert Lewandowski's being trotted out like it's Baywatch all of a sudden. I mean, okay. Uh huh. Okay. Good. Uh, Good on you, Robert. Uh huh. Hey, he's getting paid. I think I saw he's like a five hundred thousand dollar, five hundred million dollar buyout or something. Sure. Why not? I think he's happy, and if anybody wants to head in that direction, you go for it. You know, you you think that you can, uh, you think that you can drop that kind of, uh, that kind of dime on something. You go, you go right ahead. Uh, but I just, I thought it was interesting how they're trotting him out, and it's like. I'm just waiting for him to start running down the beach or something, trying to save people, you know, that that are hanging out there in in, uh, the Atlantic. But it was just an interesting rollout. Looks like that's going to happen later today. Uh, Two notes for Atlanta United that I wanted to get into also um, before we get into uh, other stuff, before we go news and notes around Major League Soccer. Uh, Tony Tiente, it was signed by Atlanta United 2 yesterday. So uh, what we're seeing from uh, El Tigre, uh, is uh, has turned itself in from a 25 day a 25 day deal to a, a signed contract for the uh, Georgia Gwinnett product. And good for Tony. Um, Tony's had a lot of hard. Tony's had a lot of hard work he's had to do because he's traditionally a midfielder. Um, he was an NAIA All American as a midfielder. He's been having to play on that back line because of injuries they've suffered. And he's had a couple moments that have been tough for him, but he's also had a couple moments where he's been really good. So uh, good for Tony for getting a contract for the rest of the season. Um, Did good work at George Gwinnett college came out of KSA as well. And it's, it's good to see somebody take that opportunity and run with it. I think you always love to see it where you get a player who is a little bit older. I think he's 24 where they get that opportunity and they do enough to earn that contract for the rest of the year. And if he, and at this point it's an audition, not just for Atlanta, but for the rest of the league, because we've seen guys like Ron Kissidou and Philip Goodrum make those moves to other USL teams and be very successful. He's auditioning, not just for a future with this club, but for a future around USL or, you know, at any other level, be it MLS, USL league one, whatever you're to the point now where you're making a point that you can do this for a living and you're trying to prove that you can. And that's awesome. Yep, and uh, we f- we got to see what uh, Bobby Shuttleworth is up to. He is uh, heading to the college ranks, and he is going to be an assistant coach at Florida State University. And I thought that that was uh, I thought that that was cool to see that one uh, get wound up. Where where Bobby Shuttleworth is added to the the coaching staff of first year FSU uh, head coach Brian Penske. He hired Aaron Bruner and Bobby Shuttleworth as assistants for the, the 2022 season. Uh, Penske's quoted, put together an outstanding coaching staff, well-rounded in a variety of ways. We think we've ticked a lot of boxes with this staff. The youth game where the teaching begins. The national team level, the professional level, coupled with my experience at the college level. We couldn't be more excited to get going to have the players back in town and let the training season begin. So Bobby Shuttleworth is... Uh, going to Florida State to uh, be on the staff of uh, Florida State head soccer coach Brian Penske's uh, staff for the 2022 season. So Bobby Shuttleworth 
after his time with Atlanta United, heads down to Tallahassee to hang out with Florida State now. And good for him. I mean, we had heard it. I think it was Felipe Cardenas mentioned he might have something lined up coaching, and seems like he does. And good for Bobby. Um, like we talked about when when he when he was done, he didn't do enough. He he had a shot to grab that first team job, didn't do enough. It wasn't good enough. Um, I'd hoped he would be because you know Bobby had a very good career in MLS, and hopefully that kind of could be his last hurrah. So I was rooting for him, but he didn't do enough. And when you brought in more guys, he wasn't going to be a part of that depth chart. And he probably saw it as, okay, now's my time to get out. That was my last hurrah. Now I can start this next phase of my life, which is coaching. So good for him. Uh, Tati Castiano, since we, since I feel like almost through the remainder of this week, we probably should be discussing the, the church of the almighty Tati, since we've discussed him earlier uh, about a, uh, an undisclosed fine for, for hands to the face. It looks like that this weekend will be his farewell match before he heads to Girona. So uh, obviously as uh, obviously he's just racking up fines and, and appearances before he gets ready for the, uh, the first match of the weekend at seven o'clock going up against inter Miami. So it's, I wonder how much of this is just Tati sitting there. It's like, you know, talking, you know, tapping folks on the, on the chin and all this kind of stuff. How much of this is like, you know, I'm not going to be here. So I'm just going to do as much colorful stuff as I can, as I'm heading out the door. And I don't even know if it's that it's just Tati being Tati. He's just kind of a live wire. And, um, he is, he get, he is a little bit loose in the turns and in, in his behavior sometimes. So I think that was just Tati being Tati. Uh, so, uh, you, you, you know, next, next time he goes into, uh, next time he goes into the pits, you got to make sure that, uh, that you're not uh, tied off and loose in that you got to, you got to adjust your, you got to adjust your handling as you head to your own. Yeah, he's, he's, he got to make a couple, a uh, couple turns on the wedge, get the track bar adjustment, <laughs> that sort of thing. Uh, LAFC has acquired midfielder Sebastian Mendez from Orlando city. Uh, Orlando gets 300. Uh, is, uh, LAFC is getting Mendez. Orlando is getting 300,000 guaranteed gam up to 750,000 with uh, escalators. Uh, 2022 uh, general allocation money could receive 225 in thousand in GAM in 2023, 225 thousand in GAM in 2024. If Mendez signs a new deal with LAFC on or before the 2023 roster compliance date, Orlando retain a percentage of Mendez's future transfer fee should he be dealt. Mendez's contract with Orlando set to expire at the end of the 2022 season, so a good piece of business by Orlando. And you have your uh, Stock two sentence uh, positive quote from John Thorrington in a release from LAFC. So Sebastian Mendez, who spent four seasons with Orlando, once scored once in 72 matches, 51 starts, arriving from uh, Independiente del Valle in his home country. And you had the same uh, two sentence thank you from Luis Muzi as well. So uh, Mendez is heading from Orlando to LAFC as LAFC is loaning Francisco Janela to Nacional of Uruguay. So uh, LAFC is still very, very busy as the, we're here in the transfer window. Yeah, it's, it's a good move for LAFC. It gets them another body in that midfield. Um, Orlando kind of had a surplus there. They get 300000 for it, which they can reallocate elsewhere if they need to. Everybody wins in that situation. Let's see what he's able to contribute. Um, LAFC is going to be interested to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that is uh, it, them and Toronto FC with the the Bernadeschi press conference. So I guess he's now officially official, uh, bringing in Bernadeschi for that final DP slot. So it's uh, Bernadeschi and Signe and Crescito. And I would uh, once again recommend that if uh, if you've got the time, go back and listen to the uh, soccer over there down here crossover episode, where uh, Nick came in earlier in the week and analyzed. All of the moves from Serie A into Major League Soccer and is giving folks the, the, his ideas on how things could work and the dangers of bringing in these individuals here from Serie A, whether it's age, uh, tread on the tires, those kinds of things. So that's that's where we are with that. Uh, I guess it's time for me to read a promo now, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm in the bunker already. You're good. Go ahead. So it is time to read the promo, and the promo comes to us from our friends at Illumini Service. For odor-free, clean, fresh air, one place you need to go 
and it's eliminized. Due to rising enclosed spaces like houses, apartments, and condos, created, you know, eliminized has created a customized solution that eliminizes all organic odors, including those like pet cigarettes and food. Realtors and property managers use Eliminize Service to eliminize bad odors to help them sell or rent their homes that much faster. Eliminize Service offers a turnkey process that makes it easy to work with realtors and property managers. Kind of the environment. We like that these days. Offering a green way to get rid of odors without any kind of toxic residue whatsoever. Different than Febreze or other masking agents that we have under the sink of choice. Because when you reach under that sink... You spray the masking agent in the air. That's why they call it a masking agent, because all you're doing is masking the odor. You're not attacking the problem all the way down to the molecule like Eliminize does with their proven scientific formula. Pricing is easy one of two ways, either by the cubic foot or parts per million to come up with a price that's affordable for you, offering results in 24 hours or less. For more information about Eliminize, go to the website, Eliminize.com. But do us a favor here at SDH. Go backslash Atlanta after the dot com so they know what part of the world that you are reaching out to them from to end a sentence and a preposition. Your homework assignment, E-L-I-M-I-N-I-Z-E dot com slash Atlanta. Eliminize dot com backslash Atlanta. For odor free, clean, fresh air, Eliminai service proud sponsors of everything. SDH. A couple of other pieces of news in Major League Soccer. National Soccer Club has extended the contract of general manager Mike Jacobs, and he has been extended through 2026. So uh, good news if you're a fan of uh, Nashville SC. Dallas on the board. FC Dallas with the uh, sale of Chris Richards to Palace. Uh, FC Dallas retained 40% of the sell-on, so they got around $6 million up front, plus the a million and a quarter to the original fee. So Chris Richards, according to Tommy Scoops, Tom Bogert, now the third largest transfer in club history. Remember Ricardo Pepe was at twenty million. Brian Reynolds was at eight and a half, and so Chris Richards now at seven point two five million dollars. So good news out of uh, Dallas from a financial standpoint, and good news out of Nashville from a player standpoint. Let's go across the uh, the pond and get you all the news that you might need to know when it comes to transfers, transfer windows. And all of that kind of fun stuff. And we will also chase through uh, our talks with uh, all of our local sources that uh, know what's going on around the world of soccer. Uh, Pep Guardiola has dismissed rumors of Neymar moving to Manchester City uh, from PSG. Uh, reported La Parisienne claimed the forward had been offered to the English champions this summer. In a, and Bernardo Silva was part of a make weight allegedly. Guardiola dismissed it. Uh, he says, quote, I'm so sorry for the Parisian, but it's not true. Sorry for them because the information they were leaked was false. Neymar is an incredible player, and with the information I have, an incredibly nice guy. So leave him calm. Let him express the huge talent he has in Paris alongside Messi and all the big stars they have. But I would say Manchester City every season bought 150 players. It looks like we are interested in all players around the world. You know, that's not true. I'm sorry for Neymar, of course. So uh, not happening. Nottingham Forest announced the signing of defender Harry Tofolo from Huddersfield. So uh, Tofolo joins Nottingham Forest. Uh, Monaco is in talks with Leicester over a deal for midfielder uh, Bubakari Samare. The uh, 23-year-old apparently uh, thought to be not a part of Brendan Rodgers' plans for the upcoming season. Keen on discussing a move back to Ligue 1 after joining from Lille in a £17 million deal last summer. Monaco want to bring him back. But they also have two other targets of a similar profile if they're unable to strike up a deal for Samari. Uh, Chelsea uh, looks like they're going to move uh, back to sign RB Leipzig center back Josko Gvardiol should they fail to sign either Sevilla's Jules Kunde or PSG's Presno Kempembe, according to the Evening Standard. Head coach Thomas Tuchel's reportedly urged uh, Clear Lake, Bully Clear Lake to sign two more top class central defenders following the 33 million pound arrival of Khalidou Koulibaly. Chelsea said to be confident they can sign at least one of Kunde and Kimpende, but regard Gvardiol as the perfect alternative. Leipzig are understood not to want to lose the 20-year-old Croat international, but an exceptional offer could convince them to sell. Of course it would. Chelsea are in talks with Kunde over a 51 million pound move from Sevilla. France internationals believed to have already agreed to personal terms at Chelsea. Uh, Sky in Germany reporter Florian Plettenberg is saying that uh, Bayern is targeting Tell, the uh, biggest uh, striking talent in Europe. So not a topic. The two parties uh, 
in the club, one that says we need the typical striper like Chupa Moting. Others are like Mane, Sané, Gnabry, Coman. Bayern is pushing for the transfer of Matisse Tell, 17 years old from Rennes. And Bayern say, are saying this internally, according to Plettenberg. Biggest striker talent in Europe. That's why the reason they're going for him, the reason they want to invest around 25 million euro or just over 21 million pounds. So keep an eye on Bayern and 17-year-old Matisse Tell. Keep an eye on that one uh, going forward. Uh, Alfonso Davies admits Bayern will miss uh, striker Robert Lewandowski, but believes the signing of Sadio Mane from Liverpool will help the void filled by the Polish striker. And it looks like Bayern likely to keep Sané despite links to Arsenal. That one also, according to Pettenberg. Uh, Sky in Germany, uh, according to Plettenberg, looks like they might be chasing after Luis Suarez after the news about Sebastian Aller, who has now been, uh, who's been diagnosed with a, a tumor and is now fighting cancer. The information is that Suarez has been offered to Borussia Dortmund from different agents. Also talk of Sasa Kaladzic linked to Manchester United, but possibly another uh, for Dortmund as well. Rodri says the team will have to adapt as they welcome the likes of Holland and Calvin Phillips, but it should bring a change for the better. Rangers defender Calvin Bassey has joined Ajax for a fee that could rise to just under £23 million. Ajax will pay an initial 187 but the fee could rise to £22.7 million with add-ons. Rangers have also included a 10% sell-on clause. Fulham close to uh, signing... Wolfsburg defender Kevin Mbabu, uh, that one looks like £7 million, uh, going to be in the country the next 24 to 48 hours, so we'll keep an eye on that. Crystal Palace West Ham have both approached Burnley over a deal over midfielder Dwight McNeil. 134 Premier League appearances seen as a prime target because of his experience at top-level football while still being in his early 20s. So uh, the Clarets look like they are likely to demand a fee in excess of £15 million uh, pounds for McNeil if they okay the uh, departure out of a Turf Moor and head to either Crystal Palace or West Ham. Mark McAdam on Nottingham Forest. It looks like they're chasing after uh, Huddersfield's Lewis O'Brien in addition to Harry Tofolo, the 26-year-old left back. So we'll, talk, so we'll keep an eye on what Nottingham Forest is up to. And also, they are in the running for Jesse Lingard. So we'll keep an eye on Nottingham Forest and Jesse Lingard. West Ham are satisfied with the offer they have on the table, waiting for the player to make a decision. Forrest put a big number on the board. Lingard's reps have been in talks with at least four different clubs, and remember there's also discussions of D.C. United. Understood the two other offers, once again, outside of England. We mentioned D.C. So we'll keep an eye. Lingard to Nottingham Forest or someplace else. We'll keep an eye. Manchester City once again circling back to Mark Cucurella as Oleksandr Zinchenko is heading to Arsenal. 23-year-old only joined Brighton for around 15 million pounds last year, signed a long-term deal. Uh, Nathan Ake, currently at Manchester City, apparently going to stay now, linked to both Chelsea and Newcastle. So could Mark Cucurella be on his way in as Zinchenko is on his way out to the total of about 32 million pounds. We'll keep an eye on that one as well. Uh, gossip, rumor, and innuendo, anything else going on in the, uh, in the papers? And there's uh, Ronaldo is willing to do anything to leave, uh, according to uh, transfer rumors. So, uh, you know, once again, the, the national nightmare, which has transferred itself over to uh, Cristiano Ronaldo and Manchester United. So he's either leaving or staying. Aren't we all? So we'll see what the, the latest is with uh, Cristiano Ronaldo today, tomorrow, and every day. Uh, Phil Foden, John Stones, OK Gundawan, absent from Manchester City's preseason tour of the USA, contributing to incredible problems to his, for his team. So he's disappointed with the absent players. We'll see how quickly they they turn around and rejoin. And we'll see what happens there. Once again, the potential uh, Birmingham buyers are, are set to meet with uh, with John Eustace. Uh, meeting the head coach at Birmingham City, uh, Argentina striker, former striker, Maxi Lopez, local businessman Paul Richardson, arrived to begin their due diligence after exchanging contracts. Yusuf signed a three-year deal, taking his first job as an EFL manager. So we'll have that to look forward to as well. Uh, going, through the, uh, going through the papers, avoiding the three-letter and the four-letter, when it comes to all of the info, UEFA, according to the, the Times, has failed to reach out to Liverpool supporters groups for their experiences at the Champions League final, raising fresh concerns about the review and how everything 
basically happened the way that it did. Absolute chaos there and uh, required required viewing for the, the breakdown of it. Cave Salcohol at Sky did a great walk and talk of about six and a half minutes, and it's on social media that you can keep an eye on to, to look at that and see really what happened there at uh, the, the stadium the day of the, the Champions League final. Uh, from the Guardian, uh, once again, Chelsea close to Jules Koundé could face competition from Barca. And uh, also, Chelsea prevented Christian Pulisic from answering a question on gun control during their preseason tour of his home country, according to the Times. Uh, hosting an old firm match in Northern Ireland was proposed as a means to bolster the peace process, according to government documents that have been released. So we'll talk to Jared about that tomorrow. And uh, from uh, the Daily Star, reinforcing Cristiano Ronaldo, thought to be willing to do anything to escape amid fears that Lionel Messi could claim his Champions League goal-scoring record. Uh, Daily Mirror, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo could potentially have a move to Atletico Madrid ruined by a couple of recent Chelsea transfer flops, according to the Mirror. And uh, Chelsea attempted to sign Lewandowski from Bayern, according to Joan Laporta. And Arsenal transfer chief Adu has finally managed to get the better of Juve. And uh, the Serie A side has admitted defeat in their pursuit of Gabriel Magalhaes. Uh, Xavi will not take charge of his side's first match of the preseason against Inter-Miami, once again being denied entry into the United States. It was his brother that was on the touchline for the match in Fort Lauderdale. Timo Werner could lead a clear out of up to 15 players at Chelsea as the club looked to streamline their playing squad ahead of a new campaign. That's also Daily Mirror. Uh, Daily Express, Tottenham could line up a swap deal with Roma in an attempt to get their hands on Nicola Zaniolo this summer. Arsenal have been given the opportunity to secure the signature of long-term target Arthur Mello this summer. Leeds and Everton have been offered the chance to sign PSG defender Levin Kurzawa this, this summer. And keep an eye on that. Billy Gilmore will hold talks with Thomas Tuchel over his Chelsea future after dropping down from the first team's tour of the U.S. So we'll keep an eye on Billy Gilmore. And a Daily Record has Rangers fans set for a huge Champions League ticket boost for their club's eliminator against Belgians. Union St. Galois. So we'll keep an eye on that one as well. Looking at your matches today and what you can follow along with, we mentioned all the qualifiers that were going on in European football. And a lot of that was going on early. Champions League, HJK is going up against uh, Victoria Pilsen. That's at noon. Uh, Mac uh, Maccabi Haifa against Olympiakos Piraeus. That's at 1. Dinamo Kiev and Fenerbahce, interesting one at 2 o'clock. Ferenc Varos and Slovan Bratislava in Champions League qualifying. That's at 2. Also, Maribor from uh, Slovakia against Sheriff Tiraspol, who is a slight favorite on the road at uh, 2.15. So Champions League, that one is uh, five qualifiers today. And more qualifiers are next week in the uh, Champions League as well. You've got Argentina action. You have... Uh, the CAFA Championship on the women's side in Asia. Europa Conference League is going on. You have uh, three act uh, three games in qualification. Two of them are at one o'clock. One is at uh, one is at three o'clock. Uh, Botev Plavdiv from Bulgaria against Apoel Nicosia from Cyprus. Vikingor from the Faroe Islands against uh, uh, Streda from Slovakia and Sucheska and. Uh, we're going up against Klaxvik. So if you know where uh, Sucheska is from, you're a better man than I. So Faroe Islands is busy with two of their clubs going in uh, Europe, Europa Conference League qualification. A lot of qualifiers are happening tomorrow, and by a lot, I mean a lot. There will be a lot of viewing tomorrow for uh, Europa Conference League. Uh, that will pick up tomorrow as well. A lot of friendlies. You've got Scottish League Cup. You've got club friendlies going on. In uh, England, sorry, England, uh, England and Spain in the Euro at 3 o'clock. England is a plus 106. Your draw is a plus 233. Spain is a plus 263. Also, once again, action in South America. The Costa Rica Primera is at 430 uh, this afternoon. Argentina, the uh, Liga Profesional, Estudiantes Baracas Central, and Defensa y Justicia and Independiente is at 6. Uh, Brazil has action going on. Liga de Expansión is going on tonight as well. CPL is tonight in Canada. Probably can catch that on FS2 at 7 o'clock. Atletico, Ottawa, and Valor. USL Championship, a big matchup tonight at 7. Lou City and Phoenix Rising. Lou City, a big favorite at Lynn Family. That one's at 7 o'clock. Uh, DC United Bayern is tonight at 7.30. 
Orlando City Arsenal is at 7.30, and Charlotte and Chelsea is also at 7.30. Those are your friendlies involving uh, teams in Major League Soccer. Copa America, uh, Femenil for the women tonight at 8 o'clock. Ecuador, Paraguay, Colombia, Chile. Minnesota United and Everton is tonight at 8 o'clock. More Liga Expansión at 8.05. Argentina and Brazil. Manchester City Club America is going on at 8.30 tonight. Uh, Costa Rica Primera, so and San Jose Earthquakes and Celta Vigo wrap it up at 10.30, but not before Chivas and Leon go in Liga MX for midweek action at 10.05. So there is a lot going on. You can also vote for USL Player of the Year. Go to uslwleague.com and vote for your Player of the Year, your favorite Player of the Year in USLW. That voting is up and running as well. And also, you can uh, Gareca is out at Peru. So I think that's a lot of stuff to talk about. There's plenty to go. But thanks to everybody who has been a part of the show. Thanks to uh, everybody who has been listening, commenting, and let us know what you think about what's going on in the world of soccer. Very, very busy day here in the midweek. Whether it's uh, playing friendlies or playing games that matter, getting you ready for the season overall. Thanks to uh, Dylan Butler, who you'll hear later on on the network. Thanks to Jared, as always, and thanks to you for hanging out with us here at SDH. I'm just John. Play it safe, everybody. Enjoy your midweek. Mucha plata, y'all.